In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, please be seated. The last time I had the pleasure to speak with you, I cited today's gospel. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. This passage, not only as it appears today in Matthew, but as it appears in parallel versions, feels to me like the very heart of the Christian message. So I think it's important to remember that Jesus did not pull these commandments out of thin air. The greatest commandment is articulated no fewer times than three in Deuteronomy. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Three times. So we need to recognize that Jesus was citing a commandment well known to anyone who knew Jewish law. And as we are told that the question was asked by a lawyer, someone we can reliably believe knew the law, we hope. We know that the lawyer knew what he was asking. We wouldn't any, sorry. <sighs> yes, this passage is the heart and the soul of the Christian message and not because they were pulled from thin air. These, these are the words that turn the world. They are simple, they are to the point. They are not difficult. They're not these near impenetrable texts that would make, at least in theory, a congregation wish for a truly learned sermon just to understand what they're about, to help us enter into the mystery. Love God. Love your neighbor. It's not complicated. But there we have it. It's not complicated. Now I have to tell you, I like complicated. I like to look for complicated problems for difficult texts, things that I have to really work to understand. And this, this is not that. It's not complicated, which is why it's terrifying. I had a friend tell me once that what she didn't like about Christianity was the way Christianity regarded all people as sinners. And I thought to myself, you're not? Because we look at these two simple, uncomplicated commandments and how many of us can say in our hearts that we keep them every day, every hour, every minute. Look around you in this room or if you're on the live stream, look around at the people who are with you or if you are listening from home and you're alone, special greetings to you, and think of the people that you would be with right now if you could. Have you at all times loved each of these people as you love yourself? This is the devastatingly stark, inescapable simplicity of love. It's not complicated, but it's not easy. Now, if you're like me, you've probably just thought about a good half dozen people who you see, or perhaps pre-pandemic used to see, regularly, whom you have in fact failed to love as well as you love yourself. And that, it seems to me, is the first hurdle in this commandment of extravagant, abundant love. And the people you just looked at the people you just thought of, these might be what we commonly think of as our neighbors, the people we see all the time. But that doesn't go the whole mile of this commandment. Who are our neighbors? Now, I want to pause here for a moment to say that another way to address this question would be to turn back to Matthew 5, in which Jesus also says, love your enemies. And there's no geographical limitations on that one. But a neighbor is not only an individual who is nearby or who lives nearby. 
And at least as it's commonly used, the meaning of the word shifts depending on the group that's talking. So here in Waterbury, our neighbor might be Middlebury, our neighboring town. Here in Connecticut, our neighbor might be New York or Massachusetts, our neighboring states. Here in the United States, our neighbor might be Canada or Mexico, our neighboring countries. In North America, South America, or perhaps the Caribbean, our neighboring islands. When we think of neighbors as something small, as only our next door neighbors or down the block, or as my mom would say, the borrow a cup of, cup of sugar neighbors, then we reduce and we do a certain kind of damage to this expansive commandment. Neighbor expands with each concentric circle of affiliation until we could talk about our neighbors across the Atlantic or our neighbors across the Pacific. Put another way, there is no one you will ever meet who is not your neighbor. So how do we do it? How do we live up to this uncomplicated, simple, abundant, extravagant, expansive commandment? I don't have the answer. But I think it breaks down to this. We try. We try and we fail. And then in the words of Samuel Beckett, we try again and we fail again and we fail better. We confess our sins against God and our neighbor. We try not to pick and choose who my neighbor is today based on their lovability. We try not to mistake for love our own desire to help someone who needs to work through something for themselves. We try not to leave the love out of tough love. We try not to stay away when we ought to be drawing near. And we try not to crowd when we ought to be staying away. We listen. We are flawed, striving, and often flailing beings. But in this commandment, we can try to follow the wor words of the psalmist and delight in the law of the Lord and meditate it, meditate on it day and night. And we can try.